thank you very much guys for joining us for our second segment in the first segment we discussed uh you know diagnosis and uh how the journey of Marka started and how the mom came to discover he was autistic so in this episode we are going to look at the you know now how the after the assessment how did the diagnosis go and how has the journey being so far. So karibu sana and karibu makilito once more. Thank you. Yes, so we continue from where we left. Yes. So you already did the assessment mm -hmm. and now we are in the diagnosis stage. Yeah. How did it go? So the diagnosis, I was um, uh, recommended from Kise mm -hmm. to go to Kenyatta for the diagnosis. Yeah. So I booked for the diagnosis, I was called, the booking was done. And then we went. So when we went, uh, we got into the diagnosis room. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember the psychiatrist, the pediatric psychiatrist, just told us, uh, before I even narrated the story of Marcus, yeah. she just told me, I've already seen what it is, I've already diagnosed. Because Marcus was all over the place. He was going to the sink, touching the soaps, uh, wanting to climb on the bookshelves, wanting to climb on the table. He was hyper. Yeah, he was hyper. Extreme, actually. Extreme uh, he hyper. was extreme hyper. And then I think also uh, we got to Kenyatta early. So we, I went to Kenyatta, the special, um, the doctor's plaza. Mm -hmm. So we got there early, but the doctor delayed a bit. So you see we had stayed for like almost two hours because the doctor uh, was not also feeling well. Okay. Yeah, so she delayed coming. So we had stayed for like two hours. Marcus was just there at the waiting bay, you no know, doing nothing. And you see, he's already used to being active up and down. You had contained him? We had contained him bay. at the waiting bay for so long. Okay. Yes, yeah, so then you see, you're restricting him. He cannot eat so many things. Mm -hmm. He cannot move. This is a hospital setup. So he was quite hyper. He was restless, actually. I think restless is the best word to use. So now when you get into the clinic, that's when he became hyper. Hyper, yes. Because now you see he's in a room where he's seeing things that he, he he's seeing uh, books, he's seeing um, to charts, he's seeing things he, can relate, things he can relate with, things that are looking attractive. Yeah. Yeah. So he was up and down. So I narrated the story to the doctor. I told her. So the first thing actually she asked me is, uh, was it a sick section or a normal delivery? Okay. Yeah, so I told her it's a normal delivery, it, it was a C-section, because uh, she was also shocked, because most autistic children are children who are born normally, because now they say that is where the challenges come in, mm -hmm. when the child is born, maybe there was a challenge somewhere, there was a complication, for example, mm -hmm. and uh, that is when now the children now have, this. Uh, there's a defect now. And then they, that's when they develop now the cognitive issues. Okay. Yeah, because uh, autism is just a, a, a disease. Uh, no, autism actually is not a disease. It's, it's a, a, developmental a developmental disorder yeah. that affects now the brain, the cognitive um, development of the child, the neurodiversity of the child. Okay. Yeah, the so before you even you proceed, I want to add women, once you're pregnant, mm -hmm. Ensure you go for the prenatal care, yeah. and uh, even at the delivery time, don't wait for you to, you know, put a second to the last bit, yeah. because those complications that can occur can affect your baby. Yeah, sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I think that is important. Yes, very. Mm -hmm. So uh, I narrated the story. Then the doctor uh, did her report, but then she diagnosed her. Uh, Marcus has ADHD, mm -hmm. and um, ADHD is um, the Attention Deficit Hyperactive Disorder. So when you look at ADHD and the ASD, the Autism Spectrum Disorder, they are slightly bit different because they say for ADHD, the child might develop the delayed milestones, the child might um, develop those milestones and uh, recover and is okay. It might not recur. But then for for ASD, now those who are in the ASD, the spectrum, this one might take time, they say so. So for Marcus, when you look at it, by the way, he doesn't have attention because you'll talk to him, you'll call him, he will not 
concentrate. Concentrate. He will not. Uh, he will not even respond. Yeah. Yeah. So he has. Because it. basically, his concentration is elsewhere. elsewhere. Yes. Uh, then uh, again, you will give him instructions. He might take at times. He might not take at times. So he has that height, and then he's hyper. But at least after I knew what I'm dealing with, after now giving him the, t taking away the foods, like the wheat, especially wheat, wheat, they so say wheat So now when the dairy. diagnosis was done, yeah. you were also given a special diet special for him. Special diet, yes. After, actually, the diet was given after the assessment. Oh, at the assessment level. Yes. So even by the time you're going for the diagnosis, mm. you had already started Again. the special diet for him. Yes. Did it have impact? A lot of it, I can say, because uh, I noted his hyperness had slightly gone down. Okay. Because he would, you know, Marcus would, uh, nowadays is when I just, uh, I just uh, remind myself of how Marcus used to be. I would remember there was a time Marcus would not sit down and watch TV. He would watch TV while standing. You take him, you go take him to a seat. He'll sit for like two minutes, then he's up. Okay. Yeah. So that is now the hyperness bit. He would be moving up and down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So he had the deficit of attention. He was hyper. Mm, that is now his. Then now the speech, but I was told uh, for him, I was told he has speech. It is just that his speech has not fully developed and also he cannot communicate verbally because there are also autistic children who talk a lot. There are those who don't like talking. There are those who are extremely social. There are those who are very antisocial. There are those who like isolating in a corner. There are those who would like going outside. Like for Marcus, he likes playing outside a lot. You'll just find him playing outside, sitting outside, playing alone. But um, nowadays I've noticed when he sees children are playing outside, he's really attracted. He'll want to. To go, to go where yeah. the kids are, yeah. And that is very important because mm. there's some sense of inclusion. Yeah. He does not withdraw from the social. Because in the early stages, these are, if I remember well, there's someone you had said he used to withdraw. To withdraw. Mm -hmm. So now you see he wants to be part of these kids. Yeah. He feel he belongs. Mm -hmm. That is very important. So after the diagnosis, were you put on medicine or uh, what were you advised by the doctor? So after diagnosis, uh, the doctor advised that uh, she doesn't like putting kids on medicine or mm. on medication, mm -hmm. those who are young. So she told us Marcus is four. By the time Marcus gets to nine, uh, probably a lot of progress will have happened. Mm. So she advised her she likes giving medication to kids who are now, when you reach six, then you reach nine, and she sees how you're progressing. Maybe you're not picking up the milestones well. The child is still nonverbal, for example. Uh, the child cannot take attend, cannot uh, take instructions completely. The child cannot express themselves. Mm -hmm. That's when now she gives medication. Okay. Then she also advised that there are also those who go for stem cell. Mm -hmm. But for stem cell therapy, uh, stem cell, uh, this, it's a surgery actually. So for the stem cell, it is not a guarantee okay. that it will work. Then stem cell is not also done in Kenya, so it is also very costly. Okay. And then you see now it's not also a guarantee that you will take your child for the stem cell surgery and it will work. Okay. Yeah. So she, 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 discar okay, she, she discouraged the medication at that point, mm. but she said uh, if... Uh, if uh, there are parents who will and they wish and they have money, they go for stem cell, but it is not a guarantee. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, when you went to diagnosis, mm -hmm. uh, is there something the doctor recommended, like therapy? Mm -hmm. Is there a routine that the doctor recommended to support markers mm -hmm. in this journey? Okay, so one thing I remember the doctor telling us is, she told us, one, she said, uh, she asked me, is he going to school? I told her yes. Uh, is he going to church? I told her yes. Mm -hmm. So she told me she's very happy at least. I have not stayed with him at home. Yeah. I have not isolated him because there are parents who have a challenge with accepting 
they isolate the kids for a very long time. Yeah. So she said, uh, Marcus should continue with schooling, mm -hmm. Marcus should continue with uh, church, mm -hmm. and uh, she advised that we continue with therapy. No, the speech the therapy. Spe the, the, the occupational therapy first. Oh, okay. Yes, so you do the occupational therapy. What does occupational therapy entail? Occupational therapy entails um, a therapy whereby they are doing various kinds of therapy mm -hmm. to stimulate their sensory nerves. Okay. Yes, so their sensory integration. Mm -hmm. So there are those kids who will go for occupational therapy. They will do the sensory integration. Mm -hmm. They will do even the fine motor for those mm -hmm. whose muscles are very weak. Yeah. And the joints, they cannot maybe walk nicely. Mm -hmm. They're also autistic, but maybe they cannot walk nicely. Yeah. They cannot sit, they cannot hold a pen or even, mm -hmm. not even a pen necessarily, even a toy. Yeah. The kids who have ch a challenge because of their muscles and the joints. Okay. So occupational therapy entails all that. Mm -hmm. So but for Marcus, first of all, I was, uh, I was told, first of all, we start with the occupational therapy, whereby sensory integration is done. So you go and do various kinds of therapy, whereby they are calmed down fast. Mm. Because if a child does not calm down, doing speech therapy and doing the sensory uh, integration therapy, doing the, sorry, doing the fine motor, will be a challenge because you see this kid is all over the place so the hyperness the hyperness has yeah. to be contained first mm. so that now they can learn yeah. the other the other, the other therapies yes because they need to be calm calm and mm -hmm. concentrate mm. they need okay. to be very calm and concentrate that's so now you can tell them sit down try holding this try holding this because if he's hyper he will not sit down. You he will won't think, actually listen. Mm, he won't listen. You will think this kid is just naughty. Yeah. If you don't, if you don't know what you're dealing with, okay. you might. See. That's why you'll see even kids in churches, etc. You might at some point you might think this kid is naughty. He or she is not listening. But then the kid has autism. Is autistic. He cannot mm. take instructions. Mm. But is attracted to those. Uh, is, is attracted to those colorful things, those unique things. That is very paramount because, mm. uh, especially when we go at uh, social gatherings like yeah. churches mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. other occasions, yeah. we at times tend to judge kids a lot and their parents. Mm -hmm. we, we will be so fast to say, that kid is not behaving. What is happening to the mom? Mm -hmm. What is happening to the guardian? Yeah. Little did we know that this kid has, it's more than, you know, what he's doing or what they're doing, mm -hmm. but it's, a, it's another issue, it's a condition. Yeah. And the parent or the guardian cannot really do much about it. Mm. So it's also very paramount for our viewers to know that, so that we are slow in judging, mm -hmm. because one of the objective of uh, this content is to create awareness yeah. and to ensure we do we do it by less judging and supporting. You cannot support anyone when you're judging them. Yeah, sure. So these people need to be loved. Mm -hmm. These kids need to be loved. Mm -hmm. These kids need to be supported. Mm -hmm. These kids need to be included. Yeah. And even their parents, they need to be supported because I tend to think it's draining. Yeah, it is very it emotionally. Is emotionally. And if you times. don't get enough support, mm. You can break down. Actually, like for Marcus, I've just remembered something. Uh, you know, there's a time, mm -hmm. before we now knew Marcus had autism, yeah. there's a time Marcus would wake up at night, in the middle of the night. Mm -hmm. So I even remember when I went for the diagnosis, uh, the doctor asked me, does he wake up at night? We were like, yes, he wakes up at night. He will wake up and just sit on the bed and uh, start playing. You can imagine you are tired. Yes, I'm tired. I have Auntie to go wants to, work, to, to sleep to as sleep. well. Yes. So you might end up harassing this kid, mm -hmm. and Kumba, it's beyond him. It's beyond him. Again, at times, he would wake up and goes to leave the room. Goes to the sitting room. Go to the sitting room or the, to the kitchen. Kitchen is especially dangerous. Dangerous, yes. Like this a day, I remember Marcus woke up. He left me in the bed. I didn't hear. I think I was so tired. Yeah. I didn't hear. He went into the kitchen and sat at the kitchen. There's a seat at the kitchen. And so by the time now I'm turning, I'm feeling 
this boy is not in bed. Where is he? I was shocked. I woke up. So the good thing is that we lock the door to, to the, the door that to the leads to the, to, to, the, to the living room. Yeah. I lock it when we go to bed. So I had not locked the bedroom on that night. So I went, I touched the door, at least I was like, no, Marcus does not open this door from this other side. He opens it from the living room side. So I went to the kitchen, it is dark. I'm not seeing him sitting there or standing there. Kumbe, he has gone to the corner where the seat is. He's just sitting there. He's just sitting there and just looking up. Quiet. You know, at times he can talk or he plays with his toys. I was shocked. I have never been scared my life like that night. But then after that, we used to lock the room. So that means you need to be very alert. Very alert, yeah. Because um, they can even go to you know, situation that expose them to danger. Yes. Wow. Mm. Wow. So That's and very um, paramount also mm. to, to say. Yeah. Yeah. And also I remember when uh, the doctor was giving me the diagnosis, she mm -hmm. just said, um, she told me, um, accept, uh, she, she, she told me she's happy that I've accepted. Yeah. And she also said that um, uh, this is a child that needs support. Mm. So what she, what she told me is she told us, just enjoy the child and love the and child. love the child and support the child and she told me she insisted i have repeated enjoy the child just the way he don't is don't call him don't force him to be something else mm. that he's not just enjoy him take a day at a time that is the support he requires yes now how have you been mentally mm. throughout this journey did you go for counseling or did you rely on a support system? Did you have a support system? Because I, I, I'm trying to, you know, to get into your shoes and I know a mother will be the most affected person. Mm -hmm. How are you throughout this journey? Okay, um, throughout the journey, it has been um, a roller coaster because um, other times you feel you're okay, you're very much okay. Other times you feel like your world is falling apart. You feel like breaking down. It's crumbling. It's crumbling. Everything is not making sense. You are like, I never imagined ever in my life I'd be having a special child. I'll be using that word special child I mean. in my own house. Yeah. You are like, God, what did I do? You start figuring out, God, ever since I, le I, I have lived, since I was a child up to now, what did I do? Who did I wrong? But then... Um, I must say, I have had a very good one. I'm very prayerful. Mm -hmm. um, that has also helped me a lot. And then two, I have a very good support system. Mm -hmm. A very good support system of uh, friends. Okay. Yeah, and also I uh, have a very good support system of my mom has walked this journey with me. Okay. Actually, she loves markers a lot. She told me, I remember there's a time we were having a discussion about now schooling. Mm -hmm. Because I was like, now will Marcus pick up well where he, he where he is? Mm -hmm. um, my mom told me, if there's something I don't want to hear, mm. is Marcus has been taken to a special school. She told me, ukisikia huyo mtoto amekuchokesha. Nilete. Nilete. Parents love that mm. sentence. She told, she told me that. She told me, ukisikia amekuchokesha, mm. unilete ni tamlea. Ati mimi staki kusikia makas anasumbuliwa, sijui amepelekwa special, sijui amefanyiwa nini. Mm -mm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So I have, I have had a very good support. The other times it is not easy, but um, when I feel like I'm down, especially the days for therapy, which I remember there's a, just recently, like a month ago, mm. I took makas for therapy. And I passed by a friend's place, then uh, she noted when I was passing by when I was going for therapy, I was in very high spirits. That day you were not. Then when I came back after therapy, uh, I was not in high spirits. So I remember when oh, we you passed, passed when you were coming when from, I, the therapy. from therapy. Yeah. And he, you had also passed when you were going, when to, I was the going to, to the therapy. Okay. In the morning, okay. then also mid-morning, mm -hmm. I also passed by her place. Because yeah. now I was passing by her place to change my car's Actually, I take Marcus. Marcus goes to school. Mm -hmm. Then uh, I pick him because mm -hmm. uh, the teachers told me let him just live normal, a normal life. Mm. Yeah. 
so I, he goes to school very early. He does devotion with the others in class. Then I pick him. I take him for therapy. So when I pick him from school, I pass through uh, Nia Kise, a friend of mine uh, her, lives around Nia Kise. So I pass by there, I change his uniform to home clothes, we go for therapy. After therapy, I come back, I pass by her place, I also change markers. So on that specific day, when we came back from therapy, she, I didn't want to talk much. So I think I just brushed her. She asked me something, I brushed her off. I told her, ah, we will talk, I'll call you. So she sent me a text when I was dropping markers in school. Now when I took out my phone, I was reading, she sent me a text and asked me, uh, nani ya meku, she, she sent in Kiswahili, nani ya meku kasirisha hivyo? You are very okay right now, you're not okay. I just told her, I've never told you this, but Wednesday is a day that bring out, brings out mixed emotions, emotions to me. It is a day that has mixed emotions. So um, I told her that that, that that is how I was feeling. That is how I'm feeling. I'll just come around. But some I told her thanks. Yeah. Are hard. Yeah. Sometimes. Sometimes. It's some easy. days are easy. Mm. So I just told her thanks for the concern, but I'll be okay. So at least she encouraged me, and she told me you should be talking. Don't. Don't don't feel and it I alone. I understand <laughs> you because I I also remember there's a time mm -hmm. I was going through a hard time. Mm -hmm. And normally I'm a very talkative person. Mm -hmm. Me, I'm an extrovert, like extrovert. Yeah. And um, I know how to hide pain. My friend, we can laugh when I'm going through stuff. Mm -hmm. And I have done that. And um, the, there was this phase of, uh, in my life, like I was going through you know, issues that had really crushed me. Mm -hmm. And because I also love dressing well, so I will dress, especially the days I feel I'm totally done, the world is crumbling. Mm -hmm. And uh, always the thought that comes to my mind is, you give up, what about your children? That's mm -hmm. the only hope I hold on to. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, you know what, I tap myself and I'm like, you're gonna do this, you got this. Mm -hmm. But that day I will put on makeup, that day I'll be giving the biggest smile. Uh -huh. That day I will be, but let me tell you, the minute I go home, mm. I break down. Because mm -hmm. I'm also a very emotional person. Mm. I'm a very emotional person. Things that concern me and even things that concern others. Uh -huh. In fact, sometimes you will tell me things and I break down more than you, you get. Mm. So I totally relate with what you're saying. But uh, I think in this life, I've known to be my own cheerleader because sometimes you cannot be going telling everybody yeah. what you're going through mm -hmm. now. So after you the assessment, so you go for therapy every Wednesday? Yeah, I go for therapy every Wednesday. And at least I thank God I, I was able to talk to my boss at work. Mm -hmm. I just explained um, about Marcus yeah. when I went for assessment the first time I went and told them. Mm. And um, actually, I always say, uh, there's a time of my life last year and uh, this year, beginning of this year, mm -hmm. I always tell myself, if I didn't, um, if that time of my life didn't crush me, you're not going to be crushed. I'm not going to be crushed I ever. I see a lot of strength in you. Yeah. How? So, um, uh -huh. so on Wednesdays, I was able to talk to them and I, I was able to request for a, an off on Wednesday, at least in the morning, That's so that so I kind. take him for therapy, then at least I'm able to go back, I, I teach a lesson or two in That's the afternoon. That's so kind of them. Yeah. So how expensive is this therapy? Okay, so therapy varies. Uh, for At Kise, mm -hmm. Kise they, pay, they charge therapy. Uh, each kind of therapy you're doing, if mm -hmm. it is OT, mm -hmm. the occupation therapy, we have um, the, 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 the sensory integration, mm -hmm. you pay 100 shillings. Under the occupational therapy also, there's the hydrotherapy. 
also just to help them integrate their sensory nerves. Mm -hmm. It's also a hundred shillings. Then there's the, um, the sensory, the, the fine motor also a hundred shillings. So each therapy, at least at Kise, it is affordable. The challenge with Kise now is that you are many. Yeah. Yeah. So I think the government should take this as a challenge. Mm. I hope this also lands to the right ears mm -hmm. so that we may get more facilities. Yeah. Because I, I actually think it should be free because mm. the economic times we are living, I mean, there are people who cannot even put a meal, leave alone that hundred bob for yeah, therapy. For the, mm. And you can see there are several. Yeah, several. So and then also another thing I noted. Uh -huh. When I when you sign that book for therapy, when you go for therapy, you ask where are you from, mm. you will see people coming from far. From because far there are no, places. No, there are no facilities. Yes. So they only come to Kise and Kenyatta. And you mm. see Kenyatta, I hear Kenyatta, Kenyatta, there are so many people going to Kenyatta. Mm. So at least for Kise, Kise is not as flooded mm. as Kenyatta. And I'm happy because mm. lately I'm seeing even on social media, we mm. have so many, although now I don't know whether, how people can identify whether they are quacks, quacks or they are true mm. therapists, but people are saying I can do even home-based and all that, yeah. and you see that will ease mm. If you have the finances, mm. uh, you can do... There are those who go for therapy at uh, the private hospitals, okay. which varies to up to 3,500, 3,000, depending with whichever hospital you're going to. If you're lucky enough to have a cover that caters for that, you're good to go. Okay. Mm. What is your best moment of being Marcus' mother? Um, my best moment of being Marcus's mom is... Um, uh, Marcus is uh, such a kid who is he's just lovable, he's likable. Mm. So um, I have two best moments. One, when I take Marcus back to, as much as Wednesday is a day that brings out so many emotions in my life, mm -hmm. I noted when I take Marcus back to school for the, after therapy, and you find the children playing at the playground, and then you enter with Marcus. Those two kids, especially there are two girls I have noticed until I was joking, I was telling a friend of mine, my son has girlfriends. Two girlfriends, <laughs> not <laughs> even one. Not even <laughs> one. So they were like, Marcus, Marcus, Marcus has come. They come, they wow. hug him, oh. and then they hold his hand, one on this side, and the other one, and the other on, this. on this side. Oh. Then they go to teacher, they tell, teacher, Marcus, Marcus has, has come. Oh. And they have really embraced him so well. Mm -hmm. Then um, another moment is Marcus. Uh, when we are sleeping, because you know now, Marcus, I was told an autistic child should never leave your sight. Yeah. So when you're sleeping with Marcus, at times Marcus will just wake up at night, the way other autistic children does. Mm. He wakes up, when he wakes up, he'll come and touch, touch my face, and uh, touch my face, and touch my so face, lovely. and puts his arm around my shoulder, shoulder and... At times he'll just put his arm around my shoulder and he sleeps, he goes back to sleep. He gets so I'm always like, has he woken up to confirm my mom is still, still here? here. Mm. That is so lovely. Yeah. What has been the hardest thing of um, being Marcus' mom? Uh, the hardest thing of being his mom, the fact that um, you might get a nanny mm -hmm. who is not understanding to, to him. Mm -hmm. Um, you might also, he might be feeling unwell. Mm -hmm. He wants to express himself, but, but he can't. It's, it's difficult. It's difficult. Okay. Yeah. So you have to try and uh, read between the lines the at lines. times. Yeah. Like there's a day Marcus convulsed. Mm -hmm. That was the most down moment of my life. Because his fever was high. He was unwell. He cannot express himself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We have... Um, parents mm -hmm. who have autistic kids but they end up hiding them isolating them from the rest uh, hiding the fact that they're in denial they have autistic kids mm -hmm. what can you tell such parents um, what I can say tell such a parent is um, one uh, it is not your fault that you're having this kind of a child mm -hmm. You did not, we did not write letters to God. Yes. I want to conceive a baby who looks like this, who has this. Okay. We didn't. So just don't blame yourself. Don't be too hard on yourself. Mm. Just take it easy. Take a day at a time. If you're feeling low, 
just go down on your knees and pray to God to give you strength because he is the same God who gave you this baby. He is the same God who has a purpose why he gave you this child because he saw something special, something unique in you. Mm-hmm. Maybe you have love in excess. Mm-hmm. What can you tell those parents or guardians with autistic children? Because uh, we've had cases of people mm-hmm. with uh, children who are autistic or who are uh, gifted differently, but they don't want to show them to the world. They hide them, they don't want to accept, and uh, sometimes they don't even treat them very well. Mm-hmm. What can you tell these parents? And guardians. Okay, what we can tell these kind of parents, mm-hmm. they are they are out there. Mm-hmm. They are parents who have a challenge with denial. Mm-hmm. So what I can advise them is, um, it is not your fault. Mm-hmm. Just be easy on yourself. Mm-hmm. It is not your fault. Don't blame yourself that it is my fault. That's why I'm having a child who is autistic, who has cerebral palsy. I have a child who has Down syndrome or who has a certain impairment here and there. It is not your fault. Um, what I can advise them is uh, one, just take a day at your time, be easy on yourself, accept that child the way he is or the way she is, and uh, look at ways, ask yourself, God has already entrusted me with this child, what is it that I can do to make his or her life easier? What is it that I can do so that 10 years down the line, 20 years down the line, my child will thank me? Don't even look at what society will say, what family will see, because the people also get families that are not supportive. The people who get families that are very, they, 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 turn, they tend to blame you. So don't look at even what family will say, if they are not supportive, let them be. Go hard for your children. Yes, go, go for, for your children, because your children, you are the only parent they are seeing. You are the only person they look for. And they look to and they look at this parent and they see this is hope. So don't be hard on yourself. Just take it easy a day at a time. Because uh, there's someone who told me something. Someone told me that these children who, these parents who have special children, God has given them so much love. There's something unique about God so in you. That's why this parent, this child is going through whatever he's going through, but you're not breaking down. Because God has given you a special grace. Maybe you have love in excess. That's why you've been granted that child, so that this child is under your care, this child is under your support, this child is under your arms. So we just go to you, when you're feeling like it is your weakest, your most down moment, go down on your knees and ask God for strength, ask him for the grace, and don't beat yourself, don't be hard on yourself. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Um, As we wind up, I've also seen families breaking up. Mm -hmm. Because maybe there was an autistic child or a child that was born with any impairment. Mm -hmm. I think it's always hard for men, and not all, Mm -hmm. let me put that disclaimer, to accept this fact. Mm -hmm. So would you also talk to to those parents that, you know, these kids, you are the first hope of these children. Mm -hmm. And so you should even be supportive to your wife. Because I, I believe it comes with extra costs. Yeah. And uh, this should not divide the family. Mm. This should bring the family more together. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, so, um, first of all, when we went for the diagnosis, there's something the doctor said. Mm-hmm. She said that uh, she has seen it when children are taken to her for the diagnosis. Because she has practiced, uh, she has, uh, she, she's actually, she's retired. Mm-hmm. So she went back on private practice. So she said she's seen this almost her whole life. Uh, Families breaking up because of special children. She's seen um, dads not accepting their children. So actually she was saying sometimes even parents start arguing in front of her. It is your fault. It is your fault. We don't have special children in our home. So me, what I'd like to encourage such kind of parents because... um, Uh, Regardless of the fact that this child is special, this child only has two parents, you the mother and the father. So regardless of whatever differences there are between you, regardless of um, whatever your family will tell you about this child, or even about the history of your family, the children of 
your siblings, the children of your spouse's siblings. Maybe there's one who had a certain challenge. Uh, my advice to such parents, my, my request to such parents is don't listen to them. Block it. Just block it and focus concentrate. Focus on the kid. Yes. Just focus on your child. Concentrate on your child. You are the only thing that child has. Yeah. Wow, Immaculate, I can't thank you enough for being vulnerable, for being so bold with mm. us, for sharing your story. We wish you, I wish you lots of courage, grace, and always know that you are not alone in this. Mm -hmm. So we are very happy and thank you even for creating awareness, for encouraging other parents who are in the same state and they don't know where to turn to. Yeah. So guys, I hope this has been impactful to you. I hope even as I hope now we'll stop judging. Not every time you see kids, you know, going to the extremes and you're like, the parent has failed. Sometimes it's more than discipline. So thank you very much. We hope this will be impactful. And Kamakawa Tunakuliza, you continue subscribing, watching, and uh, sharing this content. And let us always know what you feel in the comment section. Thank you. Mm -hmm.